Hi, this is a lecture taken from my online course about the Apache Spark certification, which is offered by Databricks. It handles one of the topics that you need to understand in order to get certified. So check it out. In this lecture, we will learn how we can save a data frame to an external storage system. To do that, we use the Data Frame Writer API. It is an interface used to write a data set to an external storage system. This can be the file system or a key value store. You can even use the Data Frame Writer API to write directly into a database management system. However, in this lecture, you are going to learn all we need before going into the Apache Spark exam. So, what are we going to take a look at? You will see how we can save a file in the form of CSV file. We will learn what are the restrictions when we are saving data in the form of a CSV file because there are some data types that you cannot save in the form of CSV file. We will take a look into that. After that, you will see what the Data Frame Writer API should do when the data already exists. To do that, you can specify different options, for example. And the last thing we will take a look into is to how we can optimize the physical data layout of the data. This means how you can change the way Apache Spark will store your data on the external data storage system. So let's get started. Before we start saving the container of a data frame to a file system, the first thing we have to do, of course, is to first define the data frame. Here I've created a couple of data frames that you can then use in order to see how the data frame writer API works. The first one is a join between the customer data frame and the address data frame. And we will join both table, but before we do that, we would like to remove any null value. That's why we use the data frame and a package using the drop method and drop any column with any null value in there. After that, we select the customer ID and the demographics column from the customer table or the customer data frame. We then create a new column made of the first and the last name, and then we select all the columns from the address data frame. Down here, we do the same thing using the sales, the sales data frame and the item data frame. We join both of them, we clean them, and then we select a couple of columns. Now down here, we will have a data frame with the sales item. This means a sale record and information about the item that was sold. And up here we have a customer with its addresses. And down here we then join the two data frame. We will join the data frame that contain the sale information and the information about the product that was sold. And we will join it with the customer together with the address data. After that, we will have a data frame that contains the customer ID and the address of the customer and also a couple of information about the item that the customer bought. So let's run this notebook to create all the data frames. Now let's take a look into the customer purchases data frame. For that, I will use display customer purchases display of course this will then kick a, a spark job with multiple stages so we'll wait until this is done Now you can see how the data frames look, looks like. We have the customer ID, the demographics information of the customer. We'll have the name of the customer, which is a combination of the first and the last name, the address ID of the customer and the other columns from the, cost, from the address data frame. And also a couple of information about where the customer asked that the purchase should be shipped. So this is the address where the customer give in order to get his purchases. That means it's quite possible that the address ID and the ship ID are different. We have the item name, the category and the quantity. Now let's see how we can save the content of the customer purchased on the file system. To do that, we do the customer purchases. Then 
we call write and this then returns a data frame writer to us if i execute that like this you will see this returns a data frame writer now on the data frame writer we can just do something like save option the first thing to specify is the option now we would like to specify the path where the data should be saved now i can say i would like to save the data under the temp folder output create a folder name output and then the name of the folder should be customer per Jesus, like this and then save now let's execute this this will take a couple of seconds apache spa will start a job and then we will have a couple of stages running one of the stage will then trigger a shuffle and after a shuffle apache spa will create 200 shuffle files that's why down here you will have 200 tasks and we can only have like eight running because this is the Databricks Community Edition. However, we have eight different working threads going on. That's why we are able to run eight tasks. Now we can take a look into this part and see how Apache Spark then saves the data. Go ahead, use the magic file system command, ls, and then specify that and as you can see we have a lot of files available to us the reason why we will have about 200 files you will see that we have about 200 files that were written out and the reason for that I guess you can think about it is pretty simple here we have 200 partitions which means the customer purchase file itself should have about 200 partitions and we learned that Apache Spark will have one CPU core working on one partition, which means when we are saving files, Apache Spark needs to save the file one partition at a time. And each time a partition is saved, this create one file. This means this file, if we do rdd.get number of partitions, this will return 200. And this is the reason why down here you will have 200 files written out here the only way there's one possibility to change that and this is to repartition the file before we save the file so let's do that we go up here we do dot repartition repartition and say eight partitions now we execute that again now you will have file already exist this is where we can then go ahead and look into one of the most important option of the data frame writer down here you will see i think it's somewhere here we have a save mode the save mode let us instruct the data frame writer what to do when the data already exist in our case we'll just like to overwrite it so i can do copy save mode can go here do mode and then we say save mode dot overwrite for example now this will go ahead and overwrite this folder if you take a look up here again you will see this is a folder let me do the following as you can see the part that we specified up here, Apache Spy will create a folder and inside that folder, it will create all the files. That's why here, if you take a look into this folder, we will then see the single files. And I said, as I said previously, the default file format is Sparky. And here we didn't specify the file format and Apache Spy automatically creates Sparky file. Now that we repartition our file, we can then go ahead and save it again. Mode. I 
I need to put this on the data frame writer itself and not on a data frame. Now, if you expand here, you will see that the last stage will be processing eight partitions instead of 200, which means at the end, we should only have eight files inside the customer purchases folder. Now our job is done running. Let's copy this, take a look into the folder again. Then now let's see how many files we have available to us. And now you can see these are metadata files. What we are interested in are the file that ends with snappy.parky. This is the compression and this is the file type. And these are part file and for each partition, Apache's power will then write one partition. As you can see now, we go from 6 to 13. So we have eight different partitions that were then written out. If you like to change the data type of the data, you can also specify that. We can go here after the write, we specify the format, and we say we like to write the data as JSON, for example. Because we said override, Apache Spark will then go ahead and override all the files available in this folder. However, we are writing a different file format. So let's see if Apache Spark will just add the new file into this folder or if it will delete the folder altogether and recreate everything. We execute that one. It takes a couple of minutes or seconds. Now the job is done, took almost one minute to do that. Now let's take a look into this folder again. Let me copy this and we add it here, execute that. And now you go, you only have JSON's file in this, in this folder. We have some metadata information uh, if the job was successful and also when it was committed and stuff like that. However, this is what we are interested in. We are interested in part file. And you can see there are no parquet file inside this folder, which means when we do override, Apache Spark will override the entire folder and not the content of the folder. Now let's try to save the customer purchase data frame as a CSV file. Let's execute that. Now, this is what I was I wanted to show you. When we cannot save complex column with the CSV file, which means, as you can see here, we have a column here, the demographic column. This is a column of a complex type. It, it is a struct that also contains an, an array. This is a highly complex data type and the CSV file format does not support that. So in order to save this data frame, we can either remove the demographics a column altogether, or we can read only the information that we are interested in. However, just wanted to let you know that when you have a data frame with a complex data type, Apache Spark cannot save that data frame in the form of a CSV file. There's also one thing we can do. We can also specify the compression that means how we like to write how the file should be compressed. And to do that, you will do something like, let's say dot option, you will specify an option here. And then you can then say compression. The default one is snappy. For example, and Apache Spa will then save the data using the snappy compression or you can do lz4 or btip whatever you like however be be careful about the compression algorithm that you use some are quite fast on writing but slow on the reading some will even prevent your job to work in parallel because the file cannot be splitted so before using anything of the like, make sure that you go into the documentation and see how each compression type works. If you enjoyed this video, I think you will also like the entire course. The course covers all the topics you need to pass the exam, such as 
understanding the basic of the Apache Spark architecture, how to manipulate columns in a data frame, how to filter columns or rows from a data frame. It also covers how to work with user defined function and Spark SQL functions. The course contains over four and a half hours of video, and you will also get a Databricks notebook that you can import directly into a Databricks workspace so easily follows all the instruction and all the code exercise. It also contains more than 40 quizzes that will help you prepare for the exam. So use the link in the description below to join the course and get certified. Thank you.